Hey guys, Dan Picard here with Eastman's Hunting Journals. We got Brandon Mason, and we are doing a Cryptek review today of our early season bow hunting systems. We have a little bit different hunting styles, I would say, mm -hmm. and our opinions or our gear usage might vary. So we're gonna go through what Brandon likes, what he brings, what I bring, and kind of our mantra on you know what we think we need to use. Yeah, and I would say that I mean, we're kind of focused on early bow hunting in September when it's warmer out, but also kind of cooler in the high country in the evenings and mornings. But would you agree that these are our go-to base systems for pretty much everything for the rest of the year? For the most part, we might change out a couple pieces, but then we just start layering up on yep. top of that, right? That's yeah. kind of what I do. I mean, I might change out like a little bit heavier puffy or something like that, but for the most part, pretty consistent. You know, we use most of the same gear on all the hunts, but just kick it up a notch as the season gets later. Exactly, exactly. For me, like pants, let's start at pants. I'm, my legs don't get cold. It's not really something yeah, that I like, I worry about. So I'm not a heavy pant guy. I like free flowing and lightweight. These are the Sonora pants. And if you hold them up, there's actually like holes in them. They like really flow well, keep your legs cool. I hate sweaty legs. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if it's the end of October and it's 30 degrees. I'll still wear Snora pants. I might choose the Valhalla instead mm -hmm. because that's kind of your all around, but there's nothing better than early season, the wind blowing and you can feel the breeze on your legs. Yep, I, so I don't wear the Sonora pants too much. I tend to gravitate towards the Valhalla, but they're still really lightweight and they're surprisingly durable. They're extremely stretchy. These are the camouflage um, obscure transitional pair that I wear a lot during the fall. And I, I've got a pair of solid Valhallas on too that I've had for, Man, I think it's at least 10 years. So they're pretty durable. They last a long time. And they, these things have been through a lot and they still look really good, almost like brand new. So that's kind of how I am with pants too. I don't, until it gets to late season, I don't really wear a base layer pant. I'd rather quickly put like rain pants over to block the wind if I have to, if it gets that cold, you know, but I really don't worry about that early season too much. Yeah, and I would say like the Valhalla, is a good all around early season pant. Mm -hmm. Like the Snora pant definitely has its like specific application. Mm -hmm. Like maybe you're antelope hunting or maybe you are hunting in the Southern part of the US where it's hot and you want that breeze. But if you want waterproof, not so much Valhalla, a little more water repellent, it's gonna do a better job in the mountains, I would say. Yep, and it, they breathe, but shield the breeze a little bit better than the Sonoras. But yeah, they're both great early season pants. So. Where do you go from there? What's your next go-to layer? Yeah, so I always start off with the base and I don't know, I've, I just found this recently, the Banks hoodie from Cryptek. This is a bamboo a fabric. Mm -hmm. In fact, I've got the same thing on. Yeah, right we, now, like yeah. we fell in love with them pretty quick. They make a fishing shirt too, but um, I like a nice base early season and then I have to have a hood mm -hmm. for me per personally. Uh, whether it's to keep the sun off or maybe those chilly early mornings, the hood is what really allows you to regulate your body temperature. I don't know what the percentage is. I want to say 30% out of your head. Oh, for heat loss? Yeah, yeah it's a lot. It's high. It, it's a lot. So you can regulate your body temperature very effectively. Um, I have the Sonora hoodie too. I do use this one yep. too. Same here. I got um, the same one. Here. To match the pant. This has, you know, this one is just so lightweight. I would say, once again, this is more of a, like a very early season yep. type hoodie, but more of like an all around, even into late September, uh, the Sonora hoodie. It's a little bit more thick and material. And that one's completely synthetic too. It's not yes, bamboo, not, not bamboo. wool, nothing. Yep. Exactly. So it'll be a, a little bit more durable, probably a little bit more longer lasting. Yes. But yeah, it's just it's not way heavier, but just just a little bit heavier than the than the bamboo one, I think. Yep. 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 And both of them have SPF protection from the sun too. So even though that hood keeps you warmer when it's cold, it also keeps you cooler when it's hot from that hot sun. I found yep. some people look at me like I'm nuts wearing a hood when it's 90 degrees outside, but I actually stay cooler with that hood on. And this stuff, like the wind blows through it. Yeah. It's like merino where it, it's not, it's very, very breathable. Yep. So like if you get it wet, like you're going to get wet if it rains on you. So, right. Yeah. But the good thing is it dries fast too. It, exactly. Exactly. So the next, I'm, I'm a vest guy. I always use vests. Uh, this is a Cirrus vest. Cryptek doesn't have it in Obscura Transitional yet. But when I think of a vest, I think of a puffy. I have to have a puffy vest, not only because the insulation factor, but it's incredibly packable and very lightweight mm -hmm. and it's warm for how big it is. And so I always have a puffy vest 
on me. And honestly, for most hunts in the mountains, as long as it's you know fairly nice out, this is my setup for the day. Like even in the morning, I have a thin base layer with a hood and then I have a vest and I can really control my body temperature very effectively whether I'm hiking or sitting with just this right mm -hmm. here. Yep, and I, I kind of gravitate between the puffy vest and then the soft, shore, soft shell Dalibor vest, which is windproof, which helps tremendously too because when you're wearing these lightweight layers, the wind blows through them, that's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to be really breathable. And so I'll put the, the soft shell vest on, kind of the same principle, you know, regulating that temperature all day long. And there's, there's not a lot of conditions early season that you can't go through with just these two layers on, just yep. like that. Yep. yep. And I will say too, we can rabbit trail a little bit, but if I'm cold in the morning or, you know, the vest and the, the hoodie is not quite warm enough, it's amazing what gloves do in the morning, especially when you're carrying your alloy bow, that metal bow. And so when you're hiking in the morning, it's surprising how much you can actually regulate your body heat with a pair of gloves on. And they don't have to be heavy gloves either. No, no, just to keep like the cold air off your skin. And that's why I like these Kodo gloves. Not only do I, I ride dirt bikes a fair amount and mountain bikes, but these are meant to breathe because they're a riding glove, but they have some reinforcement on your knuckles for stocking bow hunting. I really like that, but they're pretty thin on the back, very thin. And then, you know, kind of the, the leather palm, but very lightweight. And it's amazing how much a lightweight glove really does reg help you regulate your body temperature. Yep, and I do the same thing, but just with the Krypton glove. And so they have Velcro closure like that that I usually leave it on that I can slip on and off easy, but if I really need to kind of lock out the wind uh, or the elements or I've got rain gear over top, I will seal it over and it really, I mean, you feel that cuff just right on your wrist and it's its really nice. And it's nice too, because you can use these gloves on your smart device. So on your mapping applications, you can navigate, you can even text if you have to. Um, obviously not as efficiently as with your bare hands, but, but it does work, I use it all the time. And that's huge, and that's another thing I was gonna say too with functionality, is having a glove that's nice and tight around your wrist because if you're bow hunting, you probably have a release on and mm -hmm. you don't want like a bulky base for your release to go over. And I will say, when it comes down to shooting, I will take this off. I will take this glove off. I don't like anchoring and shooting with a glove on. I like to be able to feel just kind of the same as like with a, a rifle and pulling a trigger. Mm -hmm. I like to have my finger on the trigger. Complete control, yeah, dexterity. Yes, yep. yeah, so that's huge too. So definitely factors. Yep. So we were talking before we started this video actually about rain gear. Now you and I differ a little bit on that. So in one of the pockets of my pack, I always have my rain layers. I try to go for the most part as light as possible. Like this is the, the top, the jacket that I've rolled up, it's called the Jupiter rain layer, the lightest piece of rain gear that Cryptic offers. They have a few different lines. They have a Coldo rain layer, which I actually run the Coldo pants with the Jupiter jacket. I just like that combination because the pants are a little bit tougher than the, than the Jupiter pants. So that way when you're stocking on stuff, you're not tearing holes in them. Um, and I've got those down here in the bottom of my pack. So when it comes to rain gear, Obviously as a backcountry hunter, I, I'm always trying to cut weight. So if I can get away with it, I won't bring rain gear. And you know, what does that mean, get away with it? Yeah, I check the forecast. Uh, if, if there's nothing uh, forecasted in, in the five day outlook, um, you know, that's one factor why I won't bring my rain gear. And it also, you know, depends on, you know, the climate that I'm hunting. And so if I'm a lower elevation or it's early season, or maybe temps are gonna be high anyway, I'll probably leave my rain gear in the truck. Now, if I'm gonna go hunt the high country at 10,000 feet, I'm probably gonna bring at least a jacket in. Right. Because weather changes so much more dr dramatically in, in the high country, and you can go from hot in 75 to rain and hail and freezing. Mm -hmm. And so, that being said, I, I do leave my rain gear home as much as possible, but still be very calculated and on where I do bring it, if right. that makes sense. Yeah, it depends on 
geographically where you're located in the country, of course. I mean, you're not going to go to Alaska and not take your rain gear, right? Right. But for most of our Intermountain West hunts, it's you know, you think of the times you actually take it out of your pack to put it on. In fact, I probably use mine more as a windbreaker than anything, which is what that jacket uh, is. That's the Dalibor. So right? the, the Dalibor jacket, this is what I have for my outer shell. So I'll put this on if it gets cold or if it starts raining, I'll put this on over the top of my vest. If I'm wearing my vest too, if I need my really my next level of protection, because not only is this material wind resistant, it's also water resistant. So like normal rain, you're not gonna get wet. It's gonna keep you dry. And usually if it does rain, I'm gonna find a big dug fir tree or something to duck under, maybe a juniper and get out of the water anyway. I'm just not gonna hang out in the rain. And so because of this soft outer shell layer, that kind of has allowed me to get by without rain gear on most of my hunts. Yeah, so you save a pound to two pounds depending on the, the rain pants that you would pack with and rain jacket and all that stuff for just that one that's a little more well-rounded, functional. It's quiet so you can wear it when you're yes. stalking. So it's like, it's the jacket version of this vest, basically. Yep. Yep. Yeah, windproof, water resistant. And I've worn it in rainstorms and it I didn't get wet. Yeah. I mean, I know it's not technically waterproof long-term, but it's pretty good. It's just like a part of me, like I hate to bring this jacket and a raincoat. Yeah. I feel like that's just a waste of weight and space. Yep. But once again, totally situational where I'm hunting, the weather forecast, et cetera. So before we get to, so I usually have a puffy jacket with, before we get to that, do you have anything else that you layer up with before we get to puffy yeah. outerwear like jackets? So obviously I have this uh, Banks hoodie on, very lightweight, and then you have the Snora hoodie. And then moving later in the fall, I like the Kronos hoodie. And this is just like a mid to heavyweight style hoodie. And once we get into October, this is my new base layer uh, for those colder mornings. Uh, maybe it's below freezing in the morning and in the evening. It's chilly out. Um, I love that it zips all the way up and it goes all the way up to my nose. Uh, that, that plays a huge role on staying warm and just feeling like snug when the weather gets bad mm -hmm. is, is that face mask. Like yeah, even, coming all even if it's just psychological. Yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. So that has like a microgrid fleece pattern in there, correct? That yep. white that you see? Yep, yep, it's a microgrid fleece. It's Yeah, it's, it's like a very comfortable, stretchy fleece pattern. But I love the hood. I, like, I, I fall in love with the hoods with these. That's why I, I love them because it's so comfortable and it just makes all the difference. And I've gone back and forth with this, like shooting my bow with this all the way zipped. Can't do it, right. I don't do it. So anytime I'm, I'm going to, to make a shot, I always just stick my hand through and just take my hood down. Yep. It's just one of those things. Anything that's gonna catch on your bowstring or it's out of the norm, bad juju, like yep. collars like you have sticking up. Yep. Like you have to be very careful of that because just something that little can be the difference between missing an animal or wounding an animal and a clean kill. And that's why it's so important to shoot with this stuff on in the summertime yeah. when you're prepping because I screwed up on a spring, back, a spring black bear last uh, season because I had a face mask up and I never shoot with that on. And because I shoot instinctively and I don't have a peep in my string, I have a kisser button just for a rear reference point and I put that on the tip of my nose and I couldn't feel it. I was going like this and trying trying to feel it and, and I screwed up the whole stock and opportunity. Yep. So it's important. I didn't practice with it on yep. and that was a mistake on my part. So I'm kind of like you. I'm a hood guy. I like hoods on not every layer, but almost every layer. And most of the time on a, on a puffy jacket, I have a hood for sure because to lock in that warmth. But for early season on those September hunts, when I have a lightweight hood on like this to take the chill off, I, I, I kind of discovered this Cirrus, uh, kind of like it's the jacket version of your vest. So we're kind of going opposite with Dalibor and Cirrus here yep, on vest yep. and, and jacket, but it's really lightweight and there's no hood on it, which saves, you know, a, a, an ounce or two or, or even maybe three, which doesn't sound like much, but when you're counting ounces, it all adds up. And uh, so I put this on over top of this base layer and this vest and this, 
man, for September, almost, I mean, it's very rare that I wish I had another layer with me. And then also I can pack a lighter weight sleeping bag with me too that isn't rated for quite as cold because I don't mind sleeping in my clothes. So sleep in this, it ups the R value in my sleeping bag and I don't have to pack as much stuff in. Yep, yep. yep. And kind of going off the, the puffy jacket, I would say all around, that's probably my favorite piece, but it's more of like a late season piece. I mean, we could cover it. But like I love a, a hooded puffy jacket as well. Late season, insulation, lightweight. It's probably my favorite all around piece when I'm factoring in early season, mid season, and late season. Because there are, are applications or times in September where you get snowstorms yep. and you gotta bust out the hooded puffy. Uh, Scott Reekers and I were up in the famous Region G hunting mule deer here a couple years ago in September. No, it was actually August, we are scouting and I just brought rain layer i don't think i even brought a puffy at all and and then a soft shell vest and a base layer and we had a front move in it didn't snow but i froze up there to the point where i had to glass with my sleeping bag because i was dying up there because <laughs> the wind kicked up is blowing 20 miles an hour and it's just a cold brisk breeze and uh, so yeah it's it's worth you know just packing this with or the or the puffy vest one of the two whatever your system is so yep. Yeah, I think that that's kind of our go-to systems and everybody differs a little bit, but largely most of our team has a mix of these items, you know, in their pack or on their body. And uh, it, it, I think it's a testament to how far gear has come, even in our lifetimes, yeah. to where you can get by with this little bit of stuff for a week in the backcountry and be not just comfortable, but you know it's good stuff when you're not thinking about your gear. Yeah. You can just focus on the hunt. And that's what I love about it. And it kind of takes it to the next level. Yep. I would say for me, the biggest takeaway, don't overlook the power of gloves. I, I was one of those guys that overlooked, ah, I don't need gloves. But those early season hunts, they do make a big difference yep. for sure. How about you? What would you say not to overlook? Not to overlook. Um, I think a vest of some sort, yeah. whether it's a puffy or a soft shell like this, it like we said, you can go most of the day with a setup just like this, very lightweight. Your pack's lightweight for when you're hiking around and stalking. It doesn't matter if you're in the high country or low country because it's foolish to carry five extra pounds or whatever of gear in your pack that you don't need. Yeah. And so, yeah, I'd say a vest overall is probably the most dynamic piece yep. in this, in my opinion. But Yep. All right. Well, that's another gear review from Eastman's. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that little notification bell. Uh, leave us a comment. Maybe let us know what your favorite piece is. We're always learning. We're always adapting. That's what makes this so fun is we just want to make our kits better and always improve on what we're doing out there and what we're wearing. Yep, exactly. And hearing your feedback along with ours helps us suggest things to companies like Cryptic uh, to help them take their systems just up a notch even above where they are, already are. Yep. Thanks guys. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.